to clear your mind of any preconceived notions that you have. Because I know you have them, even if you don't think you have them. Because one of the best things I hear after every, every session I've had, I've had people come up to me and go, this was completely different than what I thought. So I'm hoping you don't have a thought in your head. So just clear your mind. <laughs> clear your mind. A couple of you are already there. You walked in without a thought in your head. You may not realize this yet, but I am a reality speaker. I speak on what is real. I don't speak on things that may be or could be. I talk about how life is now. So when we talk about negativity today, we're going to talk about how we can use the negativity that exists. It, it's going to be there whether we like it or not. So we might as well find a way to use it. Don't worry, we're not going to sing Kumbaya. We're not going to hold hands. Uh, there's, we're not going to do any trust stuff. No one's going to catch anybody. If you do, you're going to hit the ground. <laughs> because I am not going to talk about negativity in the way that you are used to hearing about it. I want to show you how some of the negative thoughts that you have, some of the fears, some of the doubts that you have, can be useful. And there's reasons why they exist. Brains think negatively because negativity is the way our brain protects us from harm. We have fears and we have doubts because it's our brain's way of going, hey, time out. Something's not right here. Something could get me in danger. When you're hunting out in the woods, we're all back, think back when we're in the cave times. Or there's just us, we're wearing loincloths. Well, don't think of me in a loincloth. But <laughs> how many people here are afraid of snakes? There you go. Nothing to be ashamed of. Even Indiana Jones is afraid of snakes. Through generations we've learned, stay, steer clear of rattlesnakes, steer clear of spiders, because they could bite us could get, and kill us. 75 to 80 percent of any given thought at any moment is negative. What do you think about right now, James? You. Why is this little man pointing at me? <laughs> right? He's thinking of snakes. Snakes. It's okay. We'll give you a hug afterwards. Our brains react to negative thinking and negative statements so much. It's called a negativity bias. And it's something I can prove. Let's take a look here. Sir, Sam, it's good to see you. Nice to meet you, sir. You look, you look a very handsome guy, nice haircut, nice, uh, very stylish glasses. I know a lot of uh, financial people have very nice glasses. Uh, <laughs> they do. That's the one thing you guys are all spending your money on. You don't care about suits and ties. You want glasses. You got nice glasses, too. Look at you. You got them. You, you got a nice pair of pants. You, you look great. Unfortunately, that's the ugliest tie I've ever seen. <laughs> Hold on a second. Just drink it in, how ugly this tie is. <laughs> no, it's, have a seat. Now, of the five things I just said, he's a good-looking guy, very nice glasses, nice pants, ugly tie. What's he going to remember? <laughs> that punk said I had an ugly tie. <laughs> how many people here believe that with a positive attitude, you can do anything? No, of course not. There are some things you cannot do. I know that no matter how hard I work, no matter how much time and effort I put in, no matter how positive my attitude is, I can never be Miss America. <laughs> Just can't do it. Don't say, oh my goodness. Don't say, oh my goodness. Lucille. Now, I looked up requirements to be Miss America. And unfortunately, I fail in a couple categories. Number one, there's an age requirement. You have to be between the ages 18 and 26. I am 35. I am too old to be Miss America. Number two, I'm married. Sorry, Lucille. She's like, thank God that rancid piece of meat's off the market. Maybe I can be Mr. America. Oh, there we go. Craig Price, Mr. America. Now, I know what you're thinking. Craig, you delicious piece of man candy. <laughs> that is too much laughing over there. <laughs> that's, that's just mean. Is that, no, that isn't even Lucille. Oh, Lucille, it's spreading. <laughs> the local news is so competitive, the advertisements for the news scare you. There's something in your house that can kill your children tomorrow at 11. <laughs> tomorrow? I know. I like, tomorrow? I mean, I hope my kids don't die in the meantime. <laughs> kids, let's go sit in the car for tonight. We're just gonna, nobody move. The weather in Houston, they try to scare you at all times. I'm not sure how they do it here, but they definitely want to scare you at all times. Is it weather central? No. 
It's storm central. Is it the weather center? No, it's the severe weather center. It used to be in Houston, they wouldn't talk about a storm until it got close to Cuba. Now, if a pygmy burps off the coast of Africa, <laughs> we're watching clouds for three weeks. <laughs> Rice University did some studies, and they found that what we call traditionally negative thinking workers are more productive than positive thinking workers. And it's because of complacency. Real simple. I'm a positive person. I love working here. In the Air Force is the greatest place to work. I love it here. Don't change a thing. Because I like it. Where a negative thinking person goes, this is the Air Force. I love working here. This is the greatest place. I can't. I, you know what? It would be better if. It would be even better. Trapped in the myth of should. I should be able to do this. I should be able to take on this, all these responsibilities. I should be able to do all these things. Mothers have the biggest problem with this. And they, I should have a family life. I should have a work life. I should have a social life. I should have, be able to take the kids to their social events. Well, that's 42 hours in a 24-hour day. You have to sacrifice something, right? I mean, and the problem is, is that you, in this culture, and it's getting better, but it still exists, uh, the culture of, well, we both go to work, and then we come home, my wife makes dinner, and on the weekends, she does chores. And I've got some honeydews, but not nearly as much. She's working every day at work, and she comes home and she works. And then, she sees, then she's got to deal with the kids. So if you have kids, like say you have two kids, and you're married, you got three kids. <laughs> I, the, the husbands here are going to hate me after this, because I'm going to talk about reality. Um, get them to do stuff. This whole myth of should, I should be able to do this, I should be able to do that, you should be able to do what you can do and nothing more. Don't be afraid to make your husband do laundry. I know the husbands in here are going to get mad at me. Husbands will screw up the first task you give them so we don't have to do it again. <laughs> we will, and, it will, and it's spectacular. Oh, we screw it up so bad. We don't just kind of make a mistake, we destroy it. <laughs> so your husband should do some laundry. Get him to do, don't give him, give him a stunt load first. Don't give him, <laughs> don't give him, don't give him anything red. Don't, don't get anything you want to wear in public. Start him off with some towels. That way, if something happens, you have some rags. But start off with something. And, and don't let him near your bra. Uh, learn this the hard way. Don't do the delicates. I, I, I tried to be a good person. She's like, and I threw all her stuff in the, in the laundry. And in goes a bra. And it get washed, and it got in the dryer. And I pull out a twisted, mangled... <laughs> I don't know what you guys have in your bras, but it's, uh, I think we should get some engineers on it because there is some spectacular engineering going on. It's got like steel girders and it's got kryptonite in it. I don't know what's going on in there. And my wife pulls out this mangled mess and she's like, you expect me to wear this? Yeah, it lifts and separates. <laughs> Negativity is just another tool. Think of it as another tool. Maybe you possess that tool. We all possess it, but maybe some are more willing to use it than others. But it's just another tool. You want to hang pictures on the wall. So we go looking through our toolbox, and we're going to look for a positive hammer. You put, you put, you put pictures up on the wall with a hammer, right? So positive hammer, positive hammer, and you pull out a negative screwdriver. Can you hang pictures on the wall with a screwdriver? Yes, yes you can. <laughs> Ask my wife. My wife, when we first moved in, couldn't wait and put all these pictures up with a screwdriver. Now, it looks like the dog chewed on it for three days. But at the end of the day, what was the result? Pictures are on the wall, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to put pictures on the wall the best way we can. And we want it to look like it looks nice, everything's straight, everything's level, but yet, it doesn't matter how they get on the wall, they're on the wall. And you have those tools now. You have permission. I'm giving you permission to be able to use and tap into the negativity of not just you, but other people. If you want to stay positive, you, now you can see how you can possibly use some of the negative thinking that's going on in your office to be more productive. It's okay. My name's Craig Price. Please enjoy the rest of your time here. You are a great job. Thank you very much. And I appreciate the front row. Thank you very much, Craig.